Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the first episode of Tusi Thoughts. Uh, this is going to be completely different to our regular daily political news show. In this segment we will cover ideas, culture and history and Maya's crazy thoughts. Yes, today in this video we're going to be covering uh, why I think Britain and British people are losing freedom and why we are going back towards authoritarianism. Actually, we're going towards a new version of authoritarianism. What is happening to the West? Now, the best way I think I can say this is in three categories. And I'm going to be talking about three different areas in this video. And I'm going to be starting with uh, comparing ourselves to America. Because everything goes back to the original mentality that's created our countries. Now, very different journeys between Britain and America. But at the same time, almost similar outcome at some point, for obvious reasons, because it's still Anglosphere, same mentality, very different approaches. But now, both America and Britain are going towards authoritarianism from different angles. So when you think about the, the essence of this nation in terms of the agreements between the, the so-called common people and the elite, that relationship has changed. Because in the past, the difference between America and Britain has always been in this country, whether we like it or not, throughout history, the agreement was always a handshake agreement between the people and the establishment. Now it's had ups and downs. But that means that it's the state that gives freedom to people through a handshake agreement. And throughout most of history, especially the last few centuries, recent centuries, that kind of worked. You know, people said, you have the power, stay out of our lives, we will respect the establishment and the state. The state gave freedom. But in America, it was the people who gave power to the establishment. People had the freedom. They decided to give power with their consent to the establishment, to the government that they had and the elites. But that was done by a codified constitution so that the state doesn't cross the line. So very different beginnings, but both of them eventually technically speaking, until recently, had freedom. People had freedom. But things are changing. Why is it changing? So in this country, the establishment has changed. That means that they no longer give us the freedom that they used to give us. So they're actually taking away our freedoms. But because we don't have a codified constitution, a lot of people feel powerless. So we are now lashing out. In the States, the, the, the powerful, the elite, who came from the common people, the government for the people by the people, all that nonsense, they've now become the new elite. And despite the constitution, they are actually going again against the original contract between the people and the government. And why is that happening? That goes to the second point, in my opinion. Europeanization of both of these nations. In America, the, the mass migration, initially the pioneers and the explorers, mostly from Europe, and the settlers and everybody else, but mostly people with certain mentality, whether they came from the Anglosphere, whether they were Irish or English or Welsh, or certain disciplines. So you've got the Italians and the Irish that have one thing in common, Catholicism and that discipline. Things changed, even though it was the Europeans who essentially made America what it is now, in terms of the, the mentality that they gave to that nation after all the ups and downs they went through and in the 1700s and 1800s as well. But in the 20th century, the recent wave of Europeans who started going to America, when America is now fully built, that was a different group of Europeans who went there, slightly more entitled. They were the people who brought ideas of Karl Marx to America. We're talking about late 19th century and early 20th century. Those ideas created FDR's New Deal. That wasn't supposed to be an American idea. America was supposed to be rogue. You choose to go there, you either succeed and survive and win and thrive, or you'll die. That was supposed to be America. Very different to Europe. But once America was built, land of opportunity, you had a new wave of Europeans going there, but with them, they took the mentality of self-entitlement in the name of safety net and equality. At first, it was fine. People said, okay, we're just going to have uh, the government intervening in our lives to help us. Everybody was fine with that. Well, where are we now? Because the government is overreaching its powers and the boundaries and everything else. In this country, similar issue, but very differently. 
You might say we are Europeans, but we are very different in terms of the mentality that we had compared to the rest of mainland Europe until 20th century. So the mass migration that happened in this country, it wasn't the, the problem wasn't people from the Commonwealth that came here, Africa or India. It was because of the fact that the academics and intellectuals and the middle classes from France, Germany and all the other countries in Europe who came here again brought in the ideas of European liberalism, which is essentially soft socialism at best. And that also changed this country. Both America and Britain has been Europeanized. And that is the second point. That is the main issue that's happened, which is again, Europe has always been authoritarian. Europe had to turn their countries into republics in order to have democracies. Of course, there are exceptions. You've got Spain and the Scandinavian countries, but that European mentality in the name of republic, they enforced the government to create a free and democratic society, but they replaced the monarchies with essentially another monarchy, but they elect that monarch. France is a good example. Macron as president, he holds almost the same power as a king, but he's elected. So what's the difference? Not much. So that's that. But the biggest reason, the clash that's happening right now, unfortunately, it's internal. The clash between city and countryside. This has always been the massive divide in many countries, but especially in Britannia and in America. The problem is, until recently, until recent decades, the country, the outside of the cities, the rural areas were the backbone of the economy and the culture. They were also given a lot of attention at times. But the academics, the intellectuals who were ruling in the cities, they are now ruling the country and everybody else is being marginalized. The elderly, especially in the rural areas, they literally have no more voice anymore. Put aside America, let's just talk about in this country, Britain. Because one of the main problems we now have is that the clash that we had between the rural areas and the urban areas, which always existed even between the Whigs and the Tories, the Conservatives and the Liberal Party, and obviously more recently, that has changed a little bit, even though there's still the backbone of the whole country that is still outside real England and real Britain is outside of London. But those who hold the position of power and information, so that's about media and entertainment and our culture, education, they are all not just based in London, they are in cities they hold more power than the farmers did at the time. We still had the barons back in the day who were the representatives of certain parts of the country. You still had uh, the, the leaders of the farming communities having power, having members of parliament. Now, the, whole, the consensus, the artificial consensus is that we are like how people are in London. They, rep they basically paint a picture that the whole country is what you see if you walk around Hackney or Islington in London or Camden. But it's not true, is it? They basically pretend, this is artificial consensus, that we are so liberal and we are so European leftist, in the name of equality, of course, in the name of diversity, that uh, the consensus in the country is uh, everybody wants rainbows and uh, everybody wants some more NHS, everybody wants more BBC, everybody wants more academics and everything else. Because the other people, who used to at least have a voice a little bit, and there was a clash, it was 50-50 between rural and urban, they've been completely silenced. There's no representative from them. There's absolutely no mention of them in the media and in culture. What was the last time you've seen a TV show or a movie about the countryside? Everything is about London. Are there about middle-class individuals, young people in London, the stories that you see now? Or it could be about the working-class poor in the urban areas. That's also the representative of the poor, not the rural areas. And it's all usually diverse and non-white. This is how they portray the country up to a point where a lot of people who are living in the countryside, they might think to themselves at times, am I the only one left that's different? Is the whole country like what we see on TV? No, it's not. That's artificial. It's not true. So the clash is that the, what we now call the cosmopolitan liberal elite pushing the globalist mentality is because they are now controlling every aspect. So how do we win? How do we go from here? This is the whole point. The best way to save this country and make it pro-freedom again is to shake up the system, the electoral system, the political establishment, the way Westminster works as a political machine. And we don't have to have a bloody revolution like the French. 
All we have to do is just remind the country of how things used to be. That handshake agreement, that the, the constitution that's not codified, but it was there for the establishment. That relationship has been forgotten. People don't feel that they have the power anymore. This is the main issue. In the name of having more common people get into the position of power, they made us believe that that is democracy. The common people actually are now in the position of power. But are they really common? Because back in the day, you had the monarchs, you had the barons and the people who were the upper classes holding the position of power. But now, the commoners that they say they have power, are they really commoners anymore? When they live in academic environments, very middle class upbringings in London, for example, private education, going to private institutions and having access to the top, are they actually in touch with the rest of us and the rest of the people in the countryside? Not really sure. Let me know your thoughts and let me know what you think of this new segment. We'll be covering a lot of things in my crazy random rants about various ideas. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Maya Tusi and we are the media.